Hallelujah. The grace that saw you and I to this last Sunday of September, we see you to the last day of this year. If Jesus tarries, we also see the last Sunday of next year. And the last Sunday of the year after that. Until a very good old age, you will not be missing. This prophetic word must answer in your life. All that see the last Sunday of this year will see the last Sunday of next year. Whatever you came for, thanking God for today, we multiply back to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your two hands, everybody, and ask God for an encounter with his word today. On this covenant day of favor, Lord, give me my word today. Let my own word come true today. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, help me to have a great conclusion of this great man. We are God in its profitable unto all things. And I thank you for this. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord Jesus, thank you again. We are all gathered at your feet today. Let no one return without a touch from you. Plant our feet on the pathways to godliness. See to it that none of us miss our step towards heaven. On this covenant day of favor, let the word of each one come true today. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, and please, you may be comfortably seated. Again, welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Amen. This great day shall mark the end of every form of misfortune in anyone's life. Whatever makes people ask, where is your God, will be turned to a testimony today. Yeah. The favor of God will write the story of many today. Yeah. May you be listed among that many. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Until the time that his word came, Psalm 102 and verse 17 to 22. Now verse 105, please. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet the fetter with, was hot with fetters, and he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. And when his word came, the king sent for him and loosed him. Many will be loosed from the bandage of slavery today. Even the ruler of the people and let him go free. God's favor will liberate you today. He made him Lord of his house and ruler of all his substance. God's favor is what makes men. I am what I am, Paul said, by the grace of God. To bind his places in his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. 
overnight massive turn around as favor landed on him from heaven. That favor traveled by his word until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him, but when his word came, the king sent and loosed him. Many, many will be loosed from the bondage of slavery today. Yeah. Slavery to sin will be terminated here today. Yeah. Slavery to misfortune, mishaps, will be over here today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every change of story begins with an encounter with the world. Encounter with the world. As we behold him as in a glass, we are changed. As we behold him as in a glass, we are changed from glory to glory into the same image as by the Spirit of the Lord. Every change of story is triggered by an encounter with the world. Every change of story in the kingdom is triggered by an encounter with the world. The word that will trigger your next level change will come to you today. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me hear you loud and say, Amen. Yeah. Understanding pathways to godliness. We are on in the last of this series today. The way of peace they know not. Isaiah 59, verse 8. They have, there is no judgment in them, in their goings. They have made them crooked paths, and those who walk therein shall not know peace. There are pathways to anything we desire from the Lord. Until we locate the pathways, you cannot assess them. So we're talking about pathways to godliness. What it takes. To have your desire, my desire to live a godly life, get realized. Pathways to godliness. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So the word of God is the way to anything that God has provided for us. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace is able to build you up. Acts 20, 32. And to give you your own inheritance among them which are sanctified. Righteousness, godliness, sanctification is our inheritance in redemption. He who knew no sin was made sin for us and we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. So that's our lot. Godliness is our lot in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. So we need pathways to realize in that. No, just like prosperity is our birthright in redemption. It was made for that we through the poverty might be rich. But we need to know the way to it. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of the way to what are provided. They don't know which way to go to arise to arrive there. And we all know that it's always what to do to prosper. Two of us. I mean, this is a given choice, you know. There is what to do to prosper. Crying can't prosper a man. Weeping can't prosper a man. No explanation will entitle any man to prosperity. You just must know the pathway. Now, healing is our right in Christ because by his stripes we are healed. But we must know the way to it. We don't know the way to it, we can't realize it. You can't be healed because the pain is tough. No. You are healed because you believe in the finished work regarding your healing. Do you believe that I can do this? Okay, get it according to your faith. So we are hid according to our faith, not according to the feelings that we have. Oh God, you should see your pain spending me. Uh -uh. Do you believe? Don't cry. Oh. That I'm able to do this. Then according to your faith, be it unto you. God will not heal because you attacked yesterday, yesterday, the day before yesterday, today. Uh -uh. Do you believe? Thy faith has made the whole. No shortcut. So there is always the pathway to every provision and redemption. And righteousness 
is one of the fundamental provisions of redemption. That also means godliness. It also means sanctification. It means everything that pleases God. Can I hear your amen? amen. Everything that pleases God. So there are pathways to it, and that's what we've been doing since the month began. Identifying pathways. The way to go to live a godly life. The ways to go to live a godly life. In the name of Jesus, not one member of this church family will miss his or her place in heaven. Amen. Not one will miss out of God's favor on the earth. Amen. Remember, God is not mocked. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. First John 3. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth, there is a doing of it. Righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous. So all the things we hear today around the world, you know, you don't need to do anything. Nothing can be further from the truth. Nothing can be further from the truth. <laughs> if we say we have no sin, when we have sin, then we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if you confess, our uh, sins, he's faithful and just. That's not Old Testament, that's New Testament. Now, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9, he said, uh, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, <laughs> nor abuse of the womankind, nor thieves, nor covetous nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God, but such were past tense, some of you, but ye are sanctified today, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So the, the things are there. And that's not Old Testament. That's New Testament. No one here will miss his place in heaven. For if only on this earth we have hope, then we have all men most miserable, most miserable, eternal regret. No one here will be a victim of eternal regret. Yeah. Now let me ask <laughs> this conscience breaking question. How many truly want to make heaven? How many want to make heaven? Now, let, let's start from this. How many believe there's heaven? Now, how many want to make their way there? Now, godliness is the only guarantee to secure a place for yourself and myself in eternity. Godliness is the only, only, every other thing is ephemeral. The only thing that endures for time is godliness. It holds unfathomable blessings on earth my God. And it secures a place for you and me in heaven in grand styles. No shaking. No shaking. Anointing ends here. They don't need anointing in heaven. Faith ends here. You don't need faith in heaven. Everything works on its own accord. Praise God. Vision ends here. You don't need vision. What are you going to do with it? To create another heaven? You don't need revelation. It ends here. Every spiritual gift ends here. Every spiritual virtue ends here. Only Godness remains relevant beyond here. So it's worth investing all of our time into instead of playing religion. Is worth investing all of our time into, and then it must begin by finding the pathways to it, knowing what to do to make it happen. Can I hear your amen? Amen. Knowing what to do to make it happen. And I pray that you not only just hear this, but you lay hold on the materials and listen over and over again until it forms in you and gets set like concrete. And then you are on forever. And I hear your amen. amen.
But exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is, and the one which is to come. Exercise yourself. Don't wish for it. Engage the truth for it. That's the meaning. First Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Engage with the truth to realize it. Acts 24, verse 16. He had to exercise myself. That's Paul the Apostle speaking. To have always a conscience. Void of offense towards God and towards man. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Then he said, exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Exercise, engage with the truth to actualize it. Engage with the truth to actualize it. Don't wait for it. Don't think that any other thing can substitute for it. No. Breakthrough ends here. Oh, there's no breakthrough in heaven. It has broken through already. Heaven is a breakthrough city. Everything is answering to God's order. There is no night nor day. There is no crying or weeping. So what breakthrough are you looking for? You are living in a mansion. In a city whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Heaven is real. And it takes godliness. To secure a place for yourself and myself in heaven. It's not group, group space. It's individuals securing a place for himself or herself in heaven. Do you know that husband and wife who appear in that place together? The two of them are one ends here. For one by one we shall appear before the judgment of God. <laughs> not Mr. and Mrs. David, come here. Faith is your turn. Now, you see, I, I, I can be in number one billion and twenty. And she's in number one hundred billion. It doesn't matter. This thing is end here. All this Mr. and Mrs. end here. <laughs> it ends just. Yes. They don't get married in heaven or give in marriage in resurrection. Mm. It ends here. Some of the studio has just changed. <laughs> but we know that one by one we shall appear before the judgment throne of God. One by one. Everyone shall give account of himself unto God. Everyone. Not every family. Everyone. Every son, every daughter will give account of himself. All we can do is put our best into one another and each one goes to answer for himself. You won't miss your steps. <laughs> you won't miss your steps. No one here shall meet his or her steps. Yeah. We must all meet in heaven. Yeah. We must all meet on those seats of glory. Yeah. It shall be a homecoming indeed for everyone. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> now, very quickly, let's examine. Three costs of ungodliness. Three. We've been doing that since the month began. But let's add these three to it this morning. Ungodliness blocks access to supernatural breakthrough on earth. Now, the word says in Proverbs 1.23, Turn ye at my reproof. And I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make my words known unto you. So it takes godliness to assess revelation. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. It is godliness to flow in revelation. Paul said, 
in 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 10, ye are witnesses and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behave ourselves among ye all that believe. And because of the abundance of revelation given me, 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 7, abundance of revelation is what flows in the life of anyone that embraces godliness as a lifestyle. Abundance of revelation. There was a Daniel that purpose in his heart not to defy himself. And it was given him light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods was in this Daniel. So, revelation flows with the fear of God. Revelation flows with the fear of God. And revelation is the trigger for all breakthroughs in life. Arise and shine because your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is upon thee. Darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be sent upon thee. And the Gentiles will come unto your light. Breakthroughs. And they are kings to the brightness of your rising. Breakthrough. The breakthrough that caused the attention of kings. Amen. Who are these that fly as a cloud? And powerful flight by light. Verse 8. A little one shall become a thousand. A small one, a strong nation. Powerful. That's how powerful revelation is in setting the stage for breakthroughs in life. You never, never have to struggle to succeed again. Yeah. Whatever it tells you to do, do it and then breakthrough is the outcome. Fill the water pot with water. And they did it. It was turned to sweet wine. Go to the pool, call Siloam and wash. He went and washed and came back safe. So it's having access, assessing what God is saying to do part time that triggers a breakthrough. Just know what God is saying to do and commit yourself to doing it. And then you experience another level of breakthrough in your life. Number two, ungodliness devastates and destroys destiny. Ungodliness devastates and destroys destiny. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. For he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not of your own? Now, verse 20. For ye are bought a price, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are the Lord's. Anybody can walk free if he or she chooses to. I see somebody here coming out of everything that has power to destroy your body. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And pride is a silent destroyer. Pride is a silent killer. Don't pull your shoulders against God. Humble yourself under his mighty hand that in due time he may exalt you. God resists the proud and gives more grace to the humble. Life minus grace equals disgrace. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty heart before a fall. A haughty spirit before a fall. Sin destroys, that's the word. Sin destroys, don't give it a place. Sin destroys, don't give it a place. The whole household of Achan was destroyed 
generation perished because of covetousness and stealing. Whole generation just crashed. 23,000 were destroyed in the wilderness for fornication. 23,000 one day. One day. One day. Sin is a destroyer. Now don't let us commit fornication. Some of them also did. And they are fair. 20 and 3,000 people in one day. Sin is a destroyer. Sin is a destroyer. Destroy it before it destroys you. Destroy it before it destroys you. You saw how Gehazi was destroyed by running after Naaman. He lied. He extorted. Robbed him of his stuff. And became leprous. Destiny crashed. Sin is a destroyer. Destroy it before it has a chance to destroy you. And number three, which is very important, it blocks access to eternity with Christ. That is the most costly of all the cost. The most costly of all the cost. It blocks access to eternity with Christ. We have read that in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. Now, Revelation 21, verse 8. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the warmongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So it, it blocks access to eternity with Christ. Deal with it today, and you will not have eternal regrets tomorrow. Deal with whatever disqualifies you for heaven today, and you'll never suffer eternal regrets tomorrow. The way out. We have the good news of the good news from Ezekiel chapter 18, 20 to 24. God is ever ready to receive anyone back if he chooses to. The soul that sinned it shall die, the soul, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Now, but if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed and keep all my status and do that which is love in my right, in my sight, love and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. If the wicked chooses to turn today, I will write off his past. That's the good news. But if the righteous is tired of righteousness and turns to doing wickedness. I will forget all the things that he has done and in the new kitchen which I found him, that will he die. Read that, 20 to 24. So let him not think he stands, take heed, lest he fall. Let him not think he stands, take heed, lest he fall. The good news, you can turn any day you choose to turn, I will receive you. That's what he said. Anyone that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. That's what he said. So repentance, like I shared last Sunday, is about rethinking our ways. Lamentation 3.40. Let us seek and search our ways and return. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Am I on course or am I faking it? 
Examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not. Know ye not, except ye be reprobates. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. It's all about the thinking our way back to God, the thinking our way back to God, the thinking our way back to God. And the prodigal son, he came to himself and had to rethink his way back to his father's house. And his dignity was restored overnight. That's the good news. Whosoever covers his sins shall not prosper. Whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Proverbs 28, verse 13. That's the good news. We can make a return back to God any day we choose to. I have heard during the time I've appointed, the day of salvation I've so called thee, behold. Now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. I just believe that some people are returning today to have their dignity restored. Amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. Let's look at some of the demands of godliness. What God requires of us if we truly choose to live a godly life. There are no small sins. Sons of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 15. Take us the foxes. The little, little foxes. Because they spoil the vine. Because our vines are of tender grapes. Be ye holy, even as your father is holy. Same free. Jesus said, be ye perfect, as your heavenly father is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. Take off. Take off. Just get rid of it. Now, we cannot do anything without his help. One of the helps available to us is the spirit of holiness. Come on, help me say that. Jesus was declared to be the Son of God by the spirit of holiness. Romans 1.4 So no one conveys him of sin. John 8.46 He knew no sin. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21. Why? By the oppression of the spirit of holiness at work in him. And as my father said, me so said I you, so it's available to us also the spirit of holiness that empowers men and women to walk on the highway of holiness in their walk with God. People love the spirit of wisdom, of knowledge, of counsel, of understanding. I mean, yeah, they are all fantastic. But the most craved for, the most uncraved for of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. There is much more in heaven than anything anybody can taste here. You will not miss it. Amen. Your place in heaven will not be lost to carelessness Amen. and ungodly living. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lift up your right hand. Lord, endure me with the spirit of holiness. The one that rested upon Christ. To enable me to live a life that pleases you. All the days of my life. Go, go ahead and pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed.
if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. He that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit which dwells in you. It will make you and me come alive to God and dead to sin. For if ye live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. So that spirit mortifies the deed of the flesh. I therefore decree that every one of us comes alive afresh unto God and dead indeed unto sin. Yeah. You receive that. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Number two, we must continue to engage the power of the blood for rescue when being attacked. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 11 and 12. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, have sent for thy prisoner out of the pit we are in is no water. Sin can be choking to every true child of God. No true child of God enjoys sin. When we sin, we get offended with ourselves. What went wrong with me? What's the matter? Where am I going? What's gone wrong with me? It's a pit where there is no water, no refreshing. It's choking. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth your prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. Tell ye to your son, oh, dear prisoners of hope, even today do I declare, I will rent that double unto thee. Double restoration for every choking experience of your life. By the blood. How? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13 and 14. If the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The blood has power to purge our conscience from dead works and to start serving the living God. So when being attacked, engage the blood for your rescue. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I overcome by the blood of Jesus. I overcome this evil thought by the blood of Jesus. I overcome this drawing force of hell by the blood of Jesus. Can I hear your amen? Hey. So we engage the blood for our rescue. For they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Revelation 12, 11. And you know, sin is by the imagination of the man of sin. Satan is a man of sin. So there are some issues that are just operated directly by Satan against an individual. <laughs> Satan stood against Joshua the high priest to resist him. He forced a filthy garment on Joshua. You know that in the chapter 3. A filthy garment was forced on Joshua. Joshua was helplessly helpless. Uh, 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 uh. Then God stepped in. Take the filthy garment from him. I give my change of raiment. Whatever the man of sin is up to in anyone's life, by the power of the blood, he must bow. Amen. <laughs> Satan must give up on your spiritual life today. Amen. Satan must give up on your spiritual life today. Amen. Now, can I say this? Godliness is absolutely for your benefit. Not for the benefit of the church. 
not for the benefit of your family? Primarily and absolutely for your benefit. You better wake up. It's appointed to the man wants to die after that judgment. Again, no one under the sound of my voice today, both on ground and around the world, will miss his place in heaven. Yeah. Number three demand stop that evil thought before it degenerates to an act. Stop every evil thought before it generates or it degenerates to an act. Now, Mark 7, 21 to 23, it said, from within, for from within, out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts. We degenerate to the following evil acts if unchecked. And the product will be adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defy the man. So it's not an external force. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what do we do? Stop the thought before it degenerates to evil acts and destroys his victim. Stop it. Stop it. And get the blood to challenge it. Stop there. No, not here. No, not here. No, not here. By the blood of Jesus. No, not here. By the blood of Jesus. No, not here. By the blood of Jesus. No, not here. So you don't out of pride pack your luggage and leave your marital home. They are just off at that time. And you didn't know where to turn to. Turn to your stronghold. You prisoners of war. Look before you leave. Amen. Turn. Turn. To slap your spouse begins with a thought. I must slap her today. At least let him know that I'm the man of this house. Satan said you need to. And do it very well. Prepare your hand. Do exercise. <laughs> At that time, the blood of Jesus. No, not me. No. It's not expected to be king to so do. No, not me. I've been redeemed. That's unlike Jesus. So it mustn't have a hold on my life. You react. By engaging the blood weapon. Can I hear your amen? amen? The only way to stop those thoughts, sir, I mean, two ways. Renew your mind by the word and engage the blood when held captive by the man of sin. Engage the blood, sir. Engage the blood. We have that authority. Engage the blood. Listen to me. You can't commit murder without first thinking so. You have to think it and program it. Suicide, you can't do it without programming it. You look for where the rope can hang in your house. You are not a carpenter. So you open the ceiling. It's all a process. It begins with the thought, and you start following the thought. You start following the thought, it degenerates an act. And then you put the rope. Then you push. The thing on which you are standing. And you start regretting from that moment. But there's nothing to hold. Stop that thought. 
and then you have destroyed the act. Stop the thought and you have destroyed the act. Stop the thought and you have destroyed the act. We need to know this pathway, sir. Now somebody's doing me, no, you are doing yourself. As a man thinking it in his heart, not as a thing for him, as he thinks in his heart. So you see. So keep your heart with all the details, for out of it are the issues of life. No one here will miss his step. Yeah. You receive that, let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. I have all it takes to stop any unwanted thought. Can I have you say that with me? I have all it takes. I have the word. I have the name of Jesus. And I have the blood of Jesus. I can stop any unwanted thought before it generates to an evil act. Lift up your right hand, everyone. And ask God for grace to take responsibility. Ask God for grace to take responsibility. Ask God for grace to take responsibility to stop every evil thought before the generation of an evil act and destroys his victim. Grace will take responsibility to stop every evil thought. I receive it today. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Now, on this covenant day of favor, please listen to this. We live in a kingdom that operates on keys. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, they are bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth, shall be losing in heaven. Keys. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 19. Keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, in Luke 11, 52, Jesus defined what the key there means. He said, one to you lawyers, the lawyers of them, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, ye hindered. Key of knowledge. The knowledge of the truth is key to every provision that God has made for us in redemption. The knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What does it take to assess heaven's favor? It's not enough to know it, understand it. And then engage with it. Number one, new birth brings us into favor with God. Amen. New birth. We are saved by grace, so we are products of divine favor. We are born of divine favor. We are saved by grace, not of ourselves. Not of what any man should boast. We are saved by grace through faith. Saved by grace through faith. So we are products of grace. We are products of heaven's favor. And then at the early church, they turned their life over to Christ. And then they were praising God and having favor with all the people. Favor accompanied their redemption on this fall. It takes being born again to become a kind of for favor. You must be born again and remain so to remain a kind of God's favor in your life. <laughs> Romans 8, 32. He did not spare his own son, but delivered him for us all. Uh, how shall he not much more freely give us all things that are with him? <laughs> Whatever God can afford is available to every child of God. You have received the son. You are entitled to every other thing that God can afford. So you are a child of favor. New birth is what makes it. One, a child of favor. Neobar. Someone, some fellows have wandered away from the Lord, but the day you return, favor is restored. Like the prodigal son, the day he returned, favor was restored back to him. Every time a believer chooses to return back to his God, all that he has lost is restored. The prodigal son returned, somebody who was begging to eat with pigs and would not be allowed, had a party in his honor, had shoes on his feet, had a robe on his neck and rings on his hand. My God. And they announced him as the guest of honor for this feast. They showed him his room, he was crying. Every 
thing he lost when he went on a war were restored. Favor always welcomes God's people into his kingdom. Amen. But until you turn, it's never your turn. Until you turn, it's never your turn. Many are going to step into strange realms of favor after this service. Yeah. By taking a new position for God in your heart. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, righteousness brings us into favor with God as in the case of Joseph and Daniel. Righteousness. Practical righteousness. Now the Lord has brought Daniel into favor with the chief of the eunuchs. In verse 9 of Daniel chapter 1, because in verse 8, he purposed in his heart not to defy himself and favor just welcome them into that realm. Joseph found favor in the sight of his master and he made him, made him overseer of all that he had. And what was his testimony? But I fear God. I fear God. Everyone that was in the fear of God enjoys God's favor naturally. Naturally. Number three, serving God and in the interest of his kingdom engenders believers' access into realms of strange favors. Thou shalt arise, Psalm 102 and verse 13, and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. On what basis? For thy servants. Take at pleasure in the stones of Zion and favor the very dust thereof. Everything about the kingdom turns him on. He has God at the center of his heart and the center of his kingdom. <coughs> then the time to favor him has come. And verse 15 says, <coughs> So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth, their glory. When you are after God and the center of his kingdom, you attract favor naturally. Favor follows you naturally. Favor follows you naturally. Now, we got not the land, like the Israelites would say, by our own might or our own strength, <laughs> but by the right hand, because we have a favor unto us. We are where we are today as a commission by his favor, sir. We don't have the skill or the expertise to be here. By his favor. Psalm 44, verse 1 to 3. Nothing secures our place in destiny like favor. 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 Joseph had his place in Egypt by his favor. <coughs> Daniel had his place in Babylon by his favor. This ministry is making his own waves today by his favor. Why? God and the interest of his kingdom as our focus. Amen. Up to now, we have not raised one prayer item on the ark project. <coughs> prayer item. Now, okay, brethren, let us pray. Oh God, let this ark project go on, go on, non-stoppable. But oh God, Say growth and replication. This coming Saturday is coming again. Yes. Moving. Show yourself strong. Amen. Lord, let every outreach and back upon by your people produce fruit. Now, that's not for one year. That's not for 10 years. That's not for 20 years. That's 40 years running. And favor has not stopped pursuing after us. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. As you have occurred to you that we have never prayed for aircraft in this church? Yes, sir. Once. Yes, sir. That, oh God, you spoke, you said. Just do what he says to do. Leave the rest oh, to him. Hallelujah. Do 
do what he says to do and leave the rest to him. Oh God, now we are building. Brother churches, arise, arise. Don't sleep. Wake up. Wake up. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. Speak in tongues. Prince, the spirit. <laughs> but when we pray, oh Lord, establish these churches. Oh Lord, let these churches grow. That's his interest. All of that things are added. Can I hear your amen? amen? You will not need to struggle for survival again in your life. Amen. Somebody believes that. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. It's your turn to celebrate. Amen. Finally, finally, it's your turn to celebrate. Amen. Finally, finally, it's your turn to celebrate. As we all know, no one ever runs out of favor running after God and into his kingdom. Nobody ever runs out of favor running after God and the interest of his kingdom. Psalm 34 verse 10, the young lions may suffer want and hunger, but they that are running after God shall not lack any good thing. They shall not lack any good thing. Any good thing. Matthew 33, seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You won't have to struggle for them anymore. Number four, or number five of what we do, the keys. Sacrificial giving is of our financial resources in promoting the kingdom of God procures favor for us. Favor, 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 favor. Favor. And so Solomon went to the man Gibeon to sacrifice there. He offered a thousand bond offerings unto God. And God said, What do you want? He said, I don't want to fail you in this privilege, grace that you have showered on me. Give me wisdom that I may do what pleases you all the time. And God said, Okay, I've had you, but that which I have not asked, I have also added to you. Both riches and honor. Verse 13 of 1 Kings. That no one in your days will compare with you. It's all addition. A response to a sacrifice. When the Lord turned again the captive of Zion, while I them that dream, then was our tongue filled with laughter, and our, our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. And we became the talk of the town. The Lord has done great things for them. The God has done great things for us. We are, we are glad. Turn again our captive to God. We know how to turn it. He that went forth and weep him, bearing precious sin, shall doubtless return again. With sheaves, return again. Doubtless return again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Turn again. And we know how to make you turn. A sacrificial life in promoting your kingdom. Time, energy, and resources. We always move God to turn things around for us. We always move God to turn things around for us. Um, one great day, I ran into favor with God. I was asking the Lord, why are we not experiencing income for our church planting mandate I've just received in 1987? And the Lord said to me, give me that car. Joy welled up in my heart. I told my wife, I said, praise the Lord. We sent the car out that day, and the Lord said to me on my way home, my son David, even if you don't want to be rich, it's too late. Come and say, too late. May you experience a sworn blessing on your life. <laughs> and every sworn blessing comes along with security. I will bless you, make thy name great, I will bless them that bless thee, and him that causes you, I will cause. I will silence them. I will prove to them I'm the one behind your blessing. It's not cooked up. I am the one. When God blesses a man, forget about any devil reverse in it. Amen. 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 
Now, see, yeah, my wife and I were involved in um, paying off transportation fee for every worshiper in this church. Just change level, boom, another realm forever. Another realm forever. He will not ask you to do what he has not given you. No, he won't ask you to. He's not a taskmaster. But you can start from where you are. They are doing transportation in your zone. You are not even dropping a dime. Is that life? That doesn't show responsibility. There are those who don't have, that's why we are there. For the little we have to be part of it. You have to start from 1,000 first. From 10 naira first before it can become 500. From 500, 1,000. 1,000, 2,000. As you remain consistent, it keeps changing your level. Amen. Can I hear your amen? Amen. amen. Somebody's buying a plastic chair today for a rural church. Tomorrow it will be the one. Amen. amen. But it's coming little by little by little. So you don't crash under it. So you don't crash under it. Every time an opportunity comes, just plug in at your level. His commandments are not grievous. Plug in at your level. Don't, don't ever join them. Say, I don't have. Say you don't have, we keep the father away from you. Just start at your level. A widow's mind. Cut Jesus' attention. Every of your seed that's genuinely from your heart catches God's attention. Can I hear your amen? amen. You are changing level. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. God's favor covers every area of our lives. Career and business breakthroughs, spiritual breakthroughs, mental breakthroughs, covers all areas of our lives. Supernatural fruitfulness, that was highly favored. And then a child was born of her that has to sit with her as after the man of women. Anything can happen when favor shows up. May the favor of God rewrite the story of everyone in this service today. Yeah. Now, here is the good news. Every air of misfortune clears off your life today. Yeah. Every cause of the wicked is overturned by the favor of God in your life today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Amen. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks, everyone. Give God thanks for his goodness and his mercy. Celebrate him. Magnify him. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Give the Lord a big clap of praise. Amen. Somebody wants to be listed as one of the children of favor in this service today. You want to be born again. You want your sins forgiven. You want to name it in the book of life. You want to make heaven at the end of your journey. Wherever you are, you would like me to pray with you this hour. Please stand to your feet. Everyone that wants to give Jesus a chance in his life today, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you, everyone that wants to give Jesus a place in his heart, stand to your feet and experience a turnaround in your life. God bless somebody else is standing up. Don't look around. Take your destiny in your hand. It's your chance for a change of story. Thank you, Lord. There are also people here in this service today that need to return back to their Heavenly Father. You know you went away. You know the journey has been rough. You want to return so that the glory of redemption can be restored back to your life. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ today, please stand to your feet and remain standing, please. Stand to your feet and remain standing. Somebody else is standing up, wherever you are, just get up on your feet. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Everyone standing, please bow your heads for a moment for prayers. And lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Stand to your feet. 
Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I ask that you forgive me my sins and wash me with your blood. And I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your help, I will serve you till the last day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all the attacks of the wicked one. You'll never step back into darkness anymore. Say shall no more have dominion over you. I pray for grace to live the overcomer's life upon your life. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. You will make heaven at the end of your journey. None of you shall miss your steps. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please complete those forms and pass them over to the church officials around with you and we'll be glad to be part of your joy and link you up with where you can have your Believers Foundation class through your telephone via SMS and you'll be glad you did. Shall we all rise to our feet? Amen. Amen. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and brought them out with favor. And by a prophet, was he preserved. You are out of the dungeon of misfortune finally today. Yeah. You'll never be found choking spiritually in a pit where there's no water. Yeah. By the power of the blood, the blood of everlasting covenant, you are out of that choking dungeon today. Yeah. Whatever trap the enemy has used to tie you down in one spot, the trap is broken and you are